Kelly, your local realtor, and I'm standing here with Stephanie, who's the owner operator of Soper Creek Wildlife Rescue. That's right. So Stephanie, tell us a little bit about what you do here. Perfect, yeah. Soper Creek Wildlife Rescue has been around for the last year. We're Durham Region's only wildlife rehabilitation center. Wow. So we take in animals all across the province, uh, whether they're sick, injured, or abandoned baby animals. We take care of them, and then we're able to release them back Aww. into the wildlife. You're a woman after my own heart. It, you know what? It's definitely a labor of love, that's for sure. We do educational programming in schools, which teach kids about the construction and what's happening and how to coexist with these animals. So you All right, so what we're going to do is going to go into our program animal portion of Soper Creek Wildlife. Yeah. Our property is actually divided in two. So our program animals are cared for on this side and on the far side, uh, where we don't allow the public to go, is where we do all of our wildlife rehabilitation. Hey, what do we got here behind us that the, caught my attention? I know, right? There are New Guinea singing dogs. Although they're not native to Ontario, they're a great way to start children um, getting used to having animals come into their classroom or to their specialty camp programming. Um, dogs are familiar to them, right? Yeah. Uh, but they're very special in the fact that they're first domesticated species of dog. They have a lot of really cool characteristics that regular dogs don't have. So we're able to connect the biology with really up close and personal. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Perfect. Or actually, let's go say hi to them, not take a look <laughs> at them. So that's yeah. actually how they communicate with each other. They don't have a regular bark like a normal dog does. Yep. They actually uh, are able to sing back and right, forth. So how many animals do you have here? So right now for our program animals, we have 32. Okay. Uh, but 32? 32, I know, I know. But for the rehab portion, in the last four weeks, we've taken over 350 animals. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get started on this? I was actually on maternity leave with my daughter yeah. and I really felt that there was a disconnect between today's children and what's going on in our own backyard. But so there I, must have been something for the animals too in terms oh, of I, I passion mean, to... Oh yeah, I, I've been working in zoos this since is really, I was 14. This is really unique and, and not something you find every day and here we have it in Clarington. And you know what? Who and that's, you? Well, and that's part of it. We're gonna just head up this way. Well, that's I'm, part I was of getting it. stuck in the mud. Oh. <laughs> that's part of it though. Um, there was a need for it in Clarington and in Durham Region. There isn't another wildlife rehabilitation center no, and there isn't amazing. anybody else that actually couples it with um, rehabilitation and education and that's a key component to rehabilitation is actually well, educating the public with about the kids. it. Exactly. Because exactly. they're growing up and they're our future. Exactly. Exactly. When we're old. Well, and we have to entrust what we're doing to them. We have to educate and make sure that they're making the right decisions, uh, whether it's for animals in their backyards, insects, all of that, right? So we have to start young and go all the way up. So this is Crimson and Clover. There are two resident red foxes. We don't actually take them off property to do any educational programming. They do our on-site stuff. So when we have specialized groups, whether it's scouts or brownies come by, they're able to uh, learn about red foxes and we're able to talk about what a healthy red fox looks like compared to things that normally you'd be able to see them and they're pretty sick when they're in the wild. You see mange, we can talk about biology, we can talk about health concerns. Um, um, so what happens, like how long do you keep the animals here for? So our program animals are with us for their entire life. Our, the program, or the animals that come in for the rehabilitation center, they're with us enough till they're able to succeed in the wild on their own. Then we take them within one kilometer from where they're found and we release them back into the wild. Okay, excellent. And who's this guy? This is Richard. I can't say that I've ever been this close to a porcupine. You know what, they're really cool. He's absolutely fantastic. He's a really good learning tool for kids. There's a lot of myths that we're able to bust. They don't actually shoot their quills at you. They have to, have to hit you with their back end. Um, you can see also that he has about 30,000 quills covering his entire body. 30,000? 30,000, 30,000. And up at the front, it looks like he doesn't have any, but that's actually part of his defense mechanism. So predators think, hey, I can bite up front, but what do they get? A surprise with all these quills underneath his fur. Wow, yeah. it's amazing. Where does a lot of your funding come from? Because I mean, this 
can't be. Yeah, we don't actually receive any funding. Um, everything is out of my pocket and out of our educational programming. So and out of love. And out of love, out of love. But love doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> so uh, we do have our educational programming. That's why we set it up that way. Um, it actually feeds into the rehabilitation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We loved having you here. Anytime. Yeah, that Anytime. was awesome. And um, so if anybody wants to reach out to you, how can they reach you? Yeah, you can call us at 905-442-1648 or hit our website at www.sopercreekwildlife.com. Excellent. There you go. Thanks.